Hello everyone. So the good people at Brew Day and Emperor's Brewery have got together and created an absolutely insane all grain beer kit. I'm going to tell you about it in this video because I've been extremely lucky to be sent one to review and take you through the brewing process with. So let's get into it. So normally with these type of videos, I would do a grain to glass approach and you'd get to see the finished product at the end. This kit is so big and involved and it's such a big beer that the brewing process, um, conditioning time and everything like that all together would mean that we're not gonna see the beer probably for a good few months at least, uh, certainly not in its best condition. So I've decided to break the video up and this will be just like a little intro showing what the kit kind of consists of up to a point without giving you the full recipe details for obvious reasons and just discussing some of the processes that you're going to have to do if you do choose to uh, purchase and and brew this beer so one thing i will say straight away and brew day won't mind me saying this because we've had this discussion um, between us already is that this is definitely not a kit for a kind of novice brewer or somebody who's got fairly limited equipment um, there's lots of complex processes involved in terms of adjuncts and um, special mashing techniques and just yeah dealing with a very complex and detailed recipe the recipe sheets and instructions uh, even for me i took about three reads through to kind of get a general idea of how everything was going to work in there so it is pretty complex and it's going to take um a pretty good kind of base knowledge of brewing in order to be able to do this successfully. It is also expensive, so there's a hell of a lot of premium ingredients here. One of the great things uh, about Emperor's beers, clearly from the look of this kit, is that um, Damon uses all natural ingredients rather than flavor extracts and things like that, but obviously that's gonna have a knock-on in terms of the price, and it's uh, there's a lot of grain in there as well for a start, lots of yeast and lots of adjuncts going in, so, uh, the price for this one currently on their website is £129. This is a 22 and a half litre kit. Whether or not you think that is a reasonable amount of money um, for this is up to you. But I think if you work out what everything costs in there, it's not you know unreasonable, essentially. Uh, and again, you definitely don't want to be throwing that amount of money around if you're not sure that you're going to be able to get a decent result out of it. So just uh, a little sort of... Um, yeah, preemptive warning on that front. This is about as complex and involved uh, as an all grain recipe kit can be. So I'm just gonna get all of the ingredients out onto the bar here, if I can fit them all on there, and give you a quick overview of everything that's in the kit and some of the processes that are gonna be involved in making the beer with those. Right, there we have it. It's an absolute monster of a kit. Look at all of this stuff that has gotta go into this beer. Like I said, it's gonna make it pretty complex because, well, just the mashing alone We've got just short of 12 kilos of grain here. So the instructions are written, assuming you'd be working with some kind of all-in-one system like a Grainfather G30. And in order to get a mash this size through, you have to split it in half and do a reiterated mash. So you're basically mashing in the second batch with the uh, work from the first half of the first portion of the mash. Um, Let's talk about the other stuff that we've got in here. So we've got toasted coconut. That smells absolutely amazing coming out of the box already. We've got a decent quantity of vanilla pods there. So I think there's about eight to 10 in that packet. That stuff's not cheap these days either, is it? Um, we've got cacao nibs, about half a kilo of those, I think. We've got four packs of yeast. Uh, the ABV on this beer potentially is between 12 and 14%. So We've got some uh, Mangrove Jack's New World yeast, which is probably there to give a little bit more of the character from that yeast. And then some US05 as well, uh, which has a slightly higher attenuation. I'd imagine that's there to really try and um, yeah, get the beer fermented down. We've got three bottles of honey, totaling about a kilo there as well. Um, Pre-measured hops. There's a surprising amount of Citra and Pacific Gem in this. So there's actually some uh, New World kind of hops going on at the end as well. We've got this fancy blueberry puree stuff here, two packs of that. Um, I've not bought any of these kind of purees myself, but I think these are quite pricey. These are kind of premium uh, brand products. 
And then just hiding at the back there, we've got a kilo of muscovado sugar as well, which along with the honey is, again, going to help just to uh, get that beer fermenting down to uh, a suitable level. The instructions we've got here are very detailed. As I said, it took me quite a while reading through these to kind of get a general gist of how the beer is going to be brewed. Um, I've already mentioned reiterated mashing. We've got additions in the fermenter with the puree, so primary additions. We've got secondary additions in terms of the coconut. We've got vanilla pods and cacao nibs, which are going to go into uh, the beer at a tertiary stage along with the oak. I didn't actually mention that. We've got uh, an oak stave here that's honeycombed. So this is uh, from Black Swan Cooperage, uh, medium toast white oak, and that's a, a measured quantity specifically for a five gallon batch, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, there's a lot going on there, and one thing that I probably didn't make clear is, as well as the uh, equipment for the actual brewing, as far as packaging and being able to manage this beer between these various stages and additions, you're really gonna struggle if you don't have uh, a kegging setup or something where you can do like closed transfers and stuff like that. Otherwise, you're going to be running a very high risk of oxidizing this beer. I know a lot of people would say oxidization isn't much of a problem with uh, imperial stouts and stronger beers, but with the amount of transfers and extra additions you're having to do here, that would definitely be a big concern for me if I wasn't able to do transfers under pressure and um, closed transfers kind of keg to keg where I'm going to be introducing these um, secondary and tertiary adjuncts. So that's it. I'm going to be trying to get this beer brewed as soon as possible. It's prob I'm pretty sure it's going to be the biggest and most complex uh, recipe that I've ever done. So fingers crossed I don't cock this one up because uh, I'm massively appreciative to Brew Day and uh, Emperor's Brewery. First of all, for just putting this recipe together so that people can have a chance to try and brew it, but especially obviously for sending it to me to test out and do a review on. And uh, yeah, it would be tragic if uh, I um, ended up turning this into drain fodder. So fingers crossed, that's not gonna happen, uh, please. So um, yeah, get onto the brewing video soon and uh, let me know what you think about this and what's in the kit and whether it's something that you'd be interested in looking at. Like I said, limited numbers of these I think available. So if you are keen, you might wanna jump on this before I get to the point where I'm putting out brewing videos and uh, tasting uh, videos, because that might be a little bit too late by that point. So yeah, uh, chuck a comment in below. Cheers, guys. I'm the dude, so that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing.